Welcome to September in Big Flats, Texas. There's a lot of things we're doing this month, as next month is our big soybean harvest. Oh, actually, let's check our soybeans right here. We can see they're growing nicely. They should be ready to harvest next month. And there's definitely been some things on my mind as far as this goes, namely our harvester performance. You recall, we recently harvested a field of sorghum, and while the harvester performed fine, I was hoping that we could have a slightly larger grain tank for it. Well, as it happens, it has the it has the standard X9 grain tank, but there is another option. I've been talking to the dealer up here, and perhaps we can trade in our X9 and put that money for the purchase of an S700, which will have a larger grain tank. That's gonna help us a whole lot when it comes to harvesting our soybean fields. Now, soybeans not as high yield, it shouldn't be, as the sorghum was. But with a bigger grain tank, it's just gonna help us all around, no matter what we're harvesting. Right now, however, yeah, I kinda came to the wrong place. This was something else I wanna talk about. We'll be heading here in a moment. So we're gonna see about negotiating for a different harvester. It shouldn't be an issue. A new X9 is pretty expensive, and the one we have is brand new. Well, it's got a couple harvests under its belt, but other than that, it's pretty new and should demand a pretty good resale price We'll have a look at that here in a moment. For now, I'm bringing the truck up here for service and to pick up our trailer, which you recall we bought, I believe in the last episode, we bought this trailer. So our grass should be ready to harvest down on field 16. I wanna check out our grass. And this month, we're gonna be getting cattle for our cattle farm. It's about time, I've been talking about it for long enough. With all the grass, the hay, and the silage that we have now, there's no reason why we can't have cattle. So we'll be purchasing a cattle trailer First, we just picked up this used trailer, and the truck has definitely seen some hours of use as well. I'd like to get both of these serviced while we're here at the shop. So we will be looking at purchasing a new harvester. I believe we can get a 2022 model S700 for possibly about the same price that we could trade our X9 in for. We'll be doing that in a moment. Let's go ahead and get this trailer home, and I'd like to see if we can transport the harvesters on this. Uh, I'm not real confident we can this trailer if you recall we bought it used and It's what they had. I'm not sure if it's big enough for a harvester It's definitely gonna be good for bales, which is ma the main reason I got it Let's go ahead and see what we can do here. So let's repair our truck and repair the trailer and While we're here at the shop Let's actually go have a look at purchasing a cattle trailer because to this month we're going to be getting cattle on the farm i'll get everything nice and ready for our harvest next month so let's have a look see at we don't have a whole lot of options here we only have one actually really so let's go ahead now this is going to run us up quite a bit of money but if we play our cards right we might actually save money trading in the harvester all right that set us back quite a bit but we're going to need that to transport our cattle I knew we were, of course we're getting cattle. The farm is all ready for them, really. Might need a water trailer, as I don't think I have one. We can have a look at that once we get the cattle. For now, let's get this home, and let's see if our harvester will fit on it. Could be a tall order, but it's got wide tires, so it might just fit on here. And we also have a new mower there. I bought that mower. This mower right here, this Batwing style John Deere mower, it is bigger. We actually, I sold the other mower we had. This has a wider working width, which will be better for the bigger field, but it's gonna require a wind rower, which is something we're gonna to have to look into actually, yes, this month. We're gonna to have to look into the purchase of a wind rower because this has no such capability that our John Deere mower had. I was able to trade those in straight across. This was the same price as the John Deere mower that we had was, right around $15,000. That was actually a pretty straight across trade. For now, let's go ahead. Let's see if our harvester will fit on this. I wanna look at getting the new harvester. It's something I was thinking about because I mentioned it multiple times, the size of our grain tank was a little bit limiting in how far we could go in each run before course offloading into the, the grain cart let's get this down to the house and see if it'll fit and I also want to have of course we'll have a look at contracts 
Um, I'll have a look at the contracts. Maybe there's another fertilizing contract or something like that that we could do, that we could hire out and have done. It'd be nice to bring in some money as we're a little bit short on money now. We'll see how the trade-in deal goes for the combine. But we have field 16, which I have not looked at yet this month. It should be ready to harvest. Let's get my cruise control back on there. It should be ready to harvest. I want to have a look at that. And that's going to be a good deal of work. But there's no reason we can't have a contract in the background as long as I'm talking about it. Let's have a look here and see. Contracts for September. Well, there is a fertilization contract. Field 7. Isn't that the one we did last month? I think it might be. I just had to get out of here to slow the truck down. Yeah, actually, we've, it's got one uh, stage of growth on it, so they want us to fertilize it. They want someone to fertilize it again. Apparently, this farmer doesn't have their fertilizing equipment, well, or they just don't want to do it because they want to loan us the fertilizing equipment for $2,000. But let's go ahead and let's take this. There's no reason not to because we can do this in the background. Field 7, same deal as last time, except contract. All right, so we'll be heating up Field 7. But again, you know, we could just have our worker do that. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, our fertilizing tractor should still be down there. I don't think I brought it home. I think it should still be down there. I'd like to get this done, as long as we have this trailer hooked up. We'll get the cattle Let's see, I'm actually going to pull this up real quick and see if there's any way to... I was going to see if there's um, sideboards I could make this wider with, but there's not. So, let's see if we can fit the harvester on here and take it down there. We're going to be keeping the header. We're not doing anything with that. It's a great grain header. There's no reason to get rid of that. But the machine itself we should be able to trade in. Hopefully it fits on the trailer. If not, of course, we can just drive it there. Oof, this is a big beast of a harvester. Trailer, again, this is mostly for bales, and that's going to come in handy. Well, probably won't be baling much on Field 16, but we will be baling at some point. We're going to want a bale trailer. Actually, you know what? Oh, that is not going to fit on our trailer. So let's drive the harvester down there then. Well, I had to try. We'll have plenty of use for this. This was a good, I'm glad I found this What this trailer used. It's definitely a great deal. They do have, yeah, again, we, we can get it an S7. It's an S700 series, I forget the exact model. And they have the 2022 models available. I thought the X9 was going to be our, our best bet. But, yeah. How could I know that, yeah, the grain tank is simply fields this large. You know, it's not, it's not really up there. So let's get this down to the dealership. Yeah, you can see it's got, well, there it says it's got 10.8 hours on it. So it's definitely done a few harvests. It could use some repairs, but I found that, well, we can get it serviced. Let's get it, uh, you know, I should have thought to wash it first, but I didn't think to wash it first. That's okay. We will get some service done on it. I don't think that's going to do anything for the resale, resale value. It will, but I don't think it'll do anything more for the resale value than the repair, than the cost of the repair. Regardless, it can't hurt to try. This has been a faithful harvester. Kind of don't want to see it go. But getting shiny new tools is definitely always fun. I believe the harvester will be looking at, I think it's an S790i. I was thinking as we were driving here, and I think that's the model that we're looking for. It should have about the same horsepower. It's really just as new, but it's not, I don't, I'm not sure it's as sophisticated a model, but 
I think it'll do everything we want it to do. Let's take this in here. And let's see what we're looking at for service. We might just trade it in as is. Boy, I really wish I would washed it first. I didn't think about that. So they're willing to offer us $434,000 to trade this in. We can repair it for $23,000. Let's just go ahead and trade it in as is. My experience is that if you spend money on repairs, it will up the resale value, but only about as much. Well, then again, let's find out for sure. So we should be looking at at least 457000 Okay, pretty much, thereabouts. Doesn't do a whole lot, but it's better to give him a repaired combine harvester. I only wish I'd washed it. Yeah, repaint. Wow. All right, so let's go ahead and sell. I hate to do this. Sell our harvester. All right, so basically we have $460,000 to get a new harvester to replace that one. Yeah, it's, if that one didn't fit on the trailer, this one surely won't either. This is really cool, though. I'm really excited to be buying a new harvester. And we can have a much larger grain tank. Let's see what our choices are here. Yeah, that was going to be our biggest. That is a full 6,000. I believe liters more than the one we had. There it is. That's yeah, that's a solid six, almost seven thousand liters larger than what we had. We can get the S790 engine in it. What was it? It was about four hundred sixty thousand, something like that. What kind of wheel setup do we want? We can go with big tracks. I like tracks. And we're going to want a long foldable pipe for it. I'd like a wide steering axis on the rear. And it looks like we did indeed save money. We managed to save about $50,000 by trading in for an S790 Let's see, 790. Yeah, we ended up trading in for the S790 and saved about $50,000. There we go. I thought we could do it. Sure enough, we could. Let's have a look at this guy. Sprung for a little American flag vinyl on the side. Really nice for... It's too bad there's not a Texan flag. I'm almost kind of surprised there wasn't. <laughs> Texans and their flag. They love it. All right. This is, this is a really nice new tool to have. Oh, can't wait to put this thing to work. Can't wait to put this thing to work. All right, let's get it down there. Let's get this down to the farm. And now, so we're set for, this is going to be a great tool. And I was able to put a wide steering axis on the rear. This will allow us to do much, much sharper turns at the end of each row. Now this grain tank, boy, I hope it even fits in the garage with this grain tank. This is going to help us. We might, I, I'm going to wager we can do an entire row on this field without having to turn around. And that is going to be really, really nice. Wow, it turns. This thing turns like a dream. I think, I gotta say, I think this is superior to the X9. Regardless of the larger grain tank, we have about 620 horsepower, I think, which is definitely enough to push a 50-foot header. We've got, with the wider rear axis, we've got, and with the wider tires and bigger tracks, we've got more track on the ground. And because the front belts on the tracks are longer, that's gonna mean less wear over time because we have a longer, different belt system on the front. Those longer tracks, they turn slower, obviously. They turn slower, and they're longer. So we're going to get a lot more use out of this combine. I think this was a better deal, and we managed to save money. I'm really psyched about that. Won't see any use until next month, but boy, I can't wait to pull this guy out of the garage next month. I only hope our pipe is long enough. 
That was not the longest pipe they have. This is a... Oh, this is a 20... Ooh, that's a good, good question. We got a 50-foot header, so we need at least a 25-foot pipe. Oh, well, not really. The width of the combine, half the width of the combine. So 25 minus half the width of the combine. How long? Because it wasn't the longest pipe, but it's the longest one that was foldable. Let's actually just have a look up here where I bought it, and that's what's going to show us here. I didn't even... The longest you can get is 28 feet. We got 26 foot. Okay. So even minus the width of the combine, we're still fine. So I say that because half the width of the combine. So we got about another four meters out to the edge maybe. Okay, we're good. I was kind of worried there for a second because I was, I was thinking, wait a second. No, it's a 26 foot pipe. So if we were running a 60 foot header, then we might have an issue. But we are good. Let's get this. Um, let's get this home, and then we're gonna go get the cattle trailer, get some cattle, and I want to have a look at our grass field. But let's get the cattle settled in first. And it looks like we are just gonna fit this in the machine shed. Whew, a closer fit, I could not imagine. That that is a thing of beauty. As a real thing of beauty. I'm glad I got the folding pipe. We can park this a little further back. Oh, I'm glad I got that guy. That's a beautiful tool. This is what's beautiful about upgrading equipment. You know, I thought the X9 would be the end all be all, the end all be all of combines. But, all right. So, let's head up to the store and let's get some cattle for our farm. It's about time. And we've got some money. We still had to sink some money into the trailer. Let's go down here. We're going to transport these to the farm. And then we're going to check on the grass down there on field 16. A lot of what we're going to be doing this month is, of course, the grass. And I'll have a look at how much forage, or I'm sorry, how much silage and how much hay we have. We can actually have a look at that once we pull off the highway here. Let's pull over and see. Let's see how much. Look all this. So, oh yes. So I, yeah, we finished the sorghum harvest. I finished the sorghum harvest, and we ended up with fifty thousand liters, fifty cubic meters, of sorghum left over from that harvest. That's ours to sell. We're gonna wait till probably, I believe, December, and sell that, and we should get a good price. We're gonna have a lot to sell come December. All of this stuff here, I believe. Yep, this is all going to sell in December right here. Now let's have a look at our... Uh, hang on a second, our mouse cursor is in my way. Um, okay, this is not showing us. Yeah, it says it show us. So we'll have to go down and look. Oh, we can look right here, actually. Of course, yes. So we have 50,000 liters of, of silage. Second here. Oh, yeah, it's called it show the same thing. Okay, so we, we were out of grass, and then hay. Oh, look at that. See, remember I said I wanted to split the field up, uh, and I wanted to do it nice and evenly, and I was being kind of like nitpicky about it. Well, look, <laughs> pretty much right on. 50,000 liters of silage and 50,000 liters of hay. Oh, no TMR, because we need to put some hay and some straw in there. But we also need straw for our cows bedding. So we'll have a look at that. We're going to have a look at a lot of cattle stuff this time. Let's get our cattle farm. Actually, let's put the cattle in the cattle farm, shall we? Let's get our new trailer here. And the animal dealer is actually where I was earlier. It's right over here. Right on the edge of the map. All right, so we're gonna get, well, we're in Texas, so we're gonna be getting Angus cows here. And I think we can fit 12 in our trailer. It's gonna be $19,000 for 
And we're getting ones that are already have reached breeding age. There we go. We've got our trailer loaded with our Angus cows. So they're already at puberty. They're already breeding age. So luckily we have straw. We have hay. We have silage. We don't have any TMR yet. We'll get that going. When we get down here, I'll put some of the silage and some of the hay into the TMR mixer. In the meantime, they can eat grass and silage. They can eat other things. But we've got a pretty good situation for them already. I will have to get some water to them. We'll figure that out. I don't think we have a water trailer. Yeah, we only have the fuel trailer. Let's get down there and also check out how the grass is doing at the cattle farm. It's about time that we got the cattle, don't you think? It's, it's about time. I've been talking about it for most of this series. It's about time we get these guys down here. And that's good because we have a lot of stuff to do coming up. So it's good to get these guys now. Now we got 12 of these. I definitely see us getting more cattle. As you've seen at the cattle farm, it's big. We got plenty of room for more. We got Angus here. We might get some of the other kind next time. I kind of just thought that maybe we should have got some different kinds. But this is these are just going to go probably in one pen. We can have another pen for a different kind of cattle. In fact, we can probably get more this month because... This was just all like a hole in one trip is, is the thing. Uh, there's our cattle farm. Let's see how our grass is doing. It should be growing back unevenly. Haven't been down here this month yet. And yes, our fertilizer is already down here. We'll get him started on field seven. Yeah, our grass is coming in a little bit unevenly. Another month, it should all be ready to harvest. Yeah, because some of this is ready to harvest. This right here is ready to harvest. And this is not. So next month... This will be ready to harvest again. But this month, of course, we have field 16. And it's field 16 is about two and a half times the size of this field. I think. No, it's about four times the size. Yeah, this is two hectares, is it not? Yeah. All right, so we're going to want to back our trailer in. And let's put him in the farthest cattle pen in the back. Let's see if we can get this back in there. I kind of came at the wrong angle, so let's <laughs> straighten that out. does it as we back in here. Let's go all the way to the back. Yeah, we got a lot, a lot of room. We can make a lot of money transporting cattle back and forth, I think. Which one do we want to go to? Let's go all the way to the farthest one. All right, let's get these guys unloaded here. There we go. All right. We got our Angus cows down here. Now let's get them some straw. Let's work on that. Let's park the truck over here. Actually, let's get our fertilizer started on field seven, the contract. Let's get that started. Um, you know, you know what? We can do that anytime. Let's get these cows some straw. Let's do do that first. Let's get this some straw and water. We can deal with this fertilizing. It looks like we might be mowing grass a little bit here, but probably largely later in the month because right now I want to take care of our new cattle. Let's go ahead and let's see. Where's our straw? Oh, yeah, our straw is over in the... It's over over yonder. And I should have picked up a bale spike. That's something that I want to look at. We don't have a bale spike. No, of course... Um, yeah, what we're going to be doing is I'll just cut the bales open and 
toss the straw in there with the with the wheel loader is what we'll do. I was thinking bale spike because our straw is currently stacked with grass, so we'll just have to kind of knock stack over to get to our straw. Yeah, now you see why I was mentioning bale spike. We don't have one. I mean, we, we did, and we were going to be using the salvage fork that we had. We're going to be using that pretty much immediately, but we need this to get the grass out of the way, the grass bales. Oh, whoops. Yeah, with this fun, uh, fun little thing with this particular vehicle, for some reason, if I lock my track in, you know, on a straight track like this, it likes to get out of control. Ooh. In uh, the motorcycle riding world, we call that a tank slapper. Yeah. It just gets more and more, because it gets more and more pronounced. Yeah, so you can't lock the track and drive this thing straight like my other vehicles. Thought I'd show you that. I found that out when I first bought this a couple episodes ago. So let's get this down there. And uh, yeah, I want to use this, use the fork to separate the grass bales from the straw bales. We'll pull the straw bales out and just cut the, cut the, the twine off those. And we'll use the, the silage bucket that we have. And we'll just dump the straw in there for the cows to use as bedding. Whatever we have left over, I'll get them some decent amount in there. And then whatever we have left over, we can put into the TMR mixer. Wow, it's pretty out here this time of year. I mean, everything is really, really... I love the greens. I do love the greens in Texas, actually. The greens in Texas are beautiful. Especially... But particularly in summertime, I remember the first time I ever went to Houston. Now that's far south of where we're at here, very far south. But when you get down there in the summertime, because of the subtropical climate, it's actually, well, not the first place, but no, I was going to say it's the first time I ever saw palm trees. It's not true. I've seen palm trees in Los Angeles and Florida and Phoenix, but... Houston, Texas, I remember when I first time I drove there, not expecting to see wild palm trees grow. See, I, I lived in Phoenix a couple times for a while. There's palm trees there, but they don't grow there. People plant them there. I remember coming into Houston, and they actually just grow there. And I remember how green and beautiful it was. Well, it's green and beautiful here right now, is what I'm saying. And I want to, we should enjoy this while we can, because the colors are about to get beautiful in a different way as we head into fall starting next month it'll be I think my third fall here I believe so third fall it does snow some here as we're in northern Texas it is going to snow a little bit it wasn't too bad last year now you didn't see it I was here we'll see how but that's we're a few months out from that now that we're back to the cattle farm let's try out our new bale spike well, I realized I was in deep trouble this second I got in the wheel loader. That was my first thought was, wait, how am I going to move these bales? All right, let's quickly get these uh, bales out of the way. I want to remember how to work this this bale spike here. This is going to be... I'm going to make quick work out of this using this method here that's why I pulled my help menu up this bill spike gives us a little bit of an edge I don't need to do auto loading no I don't need to I can totally spike these on my own but we need to get these out of the way quickly and this will keep them in a nice neat stack that's not what I wanted and that is the problem with uh, so we will be turning that off then let's put these here for now All right, no more auto loading. That was a bad idea. Oh, isn't that just adorable? Isn't that just adorable? We need a, uh, well, it's no problem. I just shouldn't have mixed the bale types. Let's go ahead and cut this bale open. Let's go ahead and just cut that bale open. And now let's pick these up. 
luckily we've got a good salvage bucket that can handle that. So here you got to see me try out some things. Yeah, I don't usually do auto load. Just for the record, I'm not an auto load guy. I don't have any auto load trailers. I have these bale spikes because I like them. But when you have mixed bales like this, not so handy. So let's put these over here. It's funny, cause, you know, the reason I stacked those there like that, it was just simpler to use the bale loader and, and, and just stack them all up in the same stack, but then that becomes very not handy. With this, now let's get a hair, let's cut these bale, cut these straw bales. Whoa, that is a mess of, that is a mess of straw. All right, let's get in here with the with the salage fork. Oh, that's right. I got to unfold this to drop it. Okay, let's get some straw to the cows. The mess on our hay shed now. Let's get this in here. And that is not how that works here. Great. It doesn't say they require straw. I know different maps. This is a little bit... <laughs> should have prepared for this a little better. I could have. Um, different maps have different requirements. See, I'm not sure these require straw. You know? It doesn't look, it doesn't look like they do. It does not look like these require straw. It's not on the thing. Very well. Um, that's going to be for food, for water. All right, so we can use all of this for TMR then is the good news. You know, I know I said a lot about getting them straw for bedding, but before you do that on a map, always see what the animal requirements are. Different maps have different requirements for animals. See, some maps don't require water. All right, so now that we know what we're doing, let's put this in the TMR mixing silo. And get this going. As long as we're using this, we may as well just use this for everything. Now I really want to get that straw out of there. It looks horrible. We might have to get a little bit creative with that. How do you think we can get that straw out of there? I can't get a vehicle in. Mm, it's not exactly true actually I'll get that straw out of there later there is a way to do it I'll do that later let's get moving on this and get the straw in the TMR mixing silo I was so sure that I just dumped it right in there I could use the forge wagon for this, but I, I figure since we already have the wheel loader right here. Although I will use the... Oh, we don't need this anymore. I will use the forage wagon to get the... Let's see, we need hay and we need silage. Yeah, so I'll use the forage wagon to move that. We need a tractor. What tractor do we have around here? Well, I know we have the fertilizing tractor right over here. Hello, cows. It's good to walk through here and hear some moos. Before, it was just a cattle farm with no cattle. I mean, what is a cattle farm with no cattle? It's a big empty spot in Texas with fences. All right. Let's grab our... Oh, yeah, it's in the... Uh, covered area over here. And then we can get this guy busy on fertiliz fertilizing. Uh, that straw is going to bug me. The straw over here doesn't bother me. Having it on the floor I guess, kind of immersive, but over there I'll get that out. I'll do it in my own time. Let's get this a little closer, I guess. Oh! Oh! We gotta fill it from over here. We don't fill it there, we fill it from in here. One part of the farm I don't think I've showed you guys yet. We're gonna fill that from in here. Uh, 
Oh, looks like we had some straw spillage from the other side. Lots of messes to clean up here. So let's get us our silage first. Because that is apparently where I decided to back up. And go the wrong way. And we're going to fill with silage. So I guess uh, a note, yeah, if you plan on playing on Big Flats, Texas, looks like this is how we take care of the cattle. I guess they don't need straw. We just need food and water. Oh, yes, we will need a water trailer. Let's put this in here. Hopefully this tractor has enough power to run this wagon. I think it does. It does. Yeah, power requirements are not too... They're, they're a lot looser than what it than what it makes you think. All right, underneath the auger, yep, and we want hay. All right, one full load of silage, one full load of hay, and I'm not sure it should need less straw than the others. Let's see what is the ratio here. It should need less straw. Yeah, half as much straw. Which I think is about what we put, we put in two bucket loads, so that's twenty thousand, plus whatever was in there. We, we had a bale or two in there, so yeah, we should have enough to make a full run of silage. running now now it's running yep there we go it started producing silage we'll have some food for you guys little cows over there i'll we'll have some food for you you girls here in a bit yeah so we're done with this for now i think we're done with this for now there's some more hay and silage but we're going to be getting plenty of grass from field 16 now let's put our trailer back let's get started on the fertilizer that won't take too long it's going to do one headlander on and hire a worker. Wait, I keep going back to the harvester. I haven't seen it much. All we did is drive it from the store. I just can't wait to use it next month. It's it feels so good to get new equipment, especially when it's big and green. All right, worker's on his way with that. Now, one thing we haven't done yet is check our grass down on field 16. We got a fresh new mower to use for that. We'll get in our JCB here, and it should be ready. I guess we can check it out. I'd like to visually check it, of course, but we can see what we're doing here. How is it fertilized? Halfway. Yeah, that's how we left it. I didn't fertilize it all the way, but there'd be plenty of grass to get there nonetheless. Oh, you can see the last thing I used this for was the grass field. You can still see the green on the tires. Yeah, well, we're headed back. Back to the grass. So I'm going to go pick up our new mower. See you guys down at the dealership. All right, here we are. Let's get our new mower. We will need a wind rower to go with this. And if I learned anything from last time, we need to get all the grass up this month before it starts growing back because that was annoying and left us with uneven grass growth. Not a huge deal as grass grows back so quickly, but let's not do that this time. Now this has a working width of, well, we'll check that here in a second. Definitely wider than the mower that we were using on the first field, which is good. So we've got eight hectares. Next month can't come soon enough. We've been doing a lot of grass work. We have been doing a lot of grass work. It's all for the cattle. I think maybe this month we can get some more cattle. Once we see, once our silage is, or sorry, once our TMR is mixed and ready, I can get a feel for how much they're going to need and see how much we can supply. 
With this field, I'd say we can supply quite a bit. I mean, yeah. Let's see, let's get this mower set and ready. And you know what I just thought? I just had a thought. Dang it. Boy, today is just a day of mixing things up. But you know what? I'm glad I thought of it. Do you know what I'm thinking of? Before I drove out there, that tractor will trample this grass. Remember? <laughs> I speak of learning lessons that I learned last month with grass. I was just speaking of that. That tractor will trample this beautiful grown grass here. We have to use the John Deere, either that or get another tractor. And the John Deere is currently in use. So let's park this mower here. Make sure there's no train. Let's not make another mistake. No train. And let's park the mower here. We're going to have to wait and use the John Deere 7880, I believe it is. 78 something. We're going to use that tractor. Ay, ay, ay. We need another tractor. I mean, it's no secret we need another tractor. We need another one with narrow wheels. Now, I can swap this out with the John Deere. No, because this will trample those crops. Yeah, we need another tractor with narrow wheels is what we need. We can go ahead. However, there's one thing we can do, and that is continue taking care of the cattle. We can get us a water trailer, which we don't have. What do we have for, well, that's pretty good. That holds a decent amount. Let's get us a basic water trailer here. All right, so we could be doing this, boy. <laughs> oh, first I go, you know what? I think I, I wasn't gonna show you guys this, but it might be an interesting tip I, I wasn't going to show this but I think maybe I will and that is that I think I know how to get the straw out of that pen now we're going to have to spe speaking strictly in like out of like character out of game terms this is something but it, it's something good to show you because in case you do something like that in your map there is a way to do it it's a little bit again immersion breaking but you may want to know if you didn't know it's, it requires a little thinking outside of the box is what we're going to have to do is what I'm saying to get that straw out of there and I'm going to have a look at a couple things I'm going to look at our trailer here as we drive by because yeah see we need to get the two wheel we need to get the sorry we need to get the wheel loader into that pen and I think I know a way to do it yeah we need to get the wheel loader into that pen and I'll show you how I'm going to do it but not just yet well, first let's get some water now, I have not done this yet. Let's think, where do we get water from? Yeah, see, that's something I haven't thought of. This is uh, this episode is all things I didn't think of. I'm not sure where to draw water from. There's a water tower down there, but it doesn't have a draw point on it. There's no water on this map, is there? I don't think there is. There is no water on the map. Surely there's a point somewhere. We'll find it. Let's have a look here at the map. Perhaps down here. Oh, that's our farm. There's no water fill point on the map, so we'll have to put one in. No problem. We can do that. We'll put it. At the, we'll put it at the cattle farm. There we go. We'll build us a water tower at the cattle farm. For now, let's get our water trailer, get down there, and I'll show you how we're going to get the straw out of the cow pasture, just in case the same thing happens to you. Requires just a little out-of-the-box thinking. And then we can get, well, we can get mowing once our John Deere is done on field seven. And then once we see how much the cattle, how much they eat, we'll see about getting more cattle. I'm sure we have enough to keep these cattle fed. Oh yes, especially with the eight hectares of grass we're about to get started mowing. At least if there is a water fill point on this map, 
I don't know where it is. If there is one, I don't know where it is. Yeah, that's just the train silo. Here is, this should be a bakery and grain mill. Yeah, flour mill and a bakery. And, you know, maybe we could get some dairy cows, though. I live out west. I live in the west, and I've lived between Colorado, Texas, and Arizona. Well, and uh, so I live out west where you don't see dairy cows out here. Everything out here is, you know, the kind of cows that we bought. But maybe we could get some dairy cows, get some milk, because I'm sure they, uh, that bakery probably... I'm not sure what it produces, but it might need milk. I don't know. I'm not an experienced cattle farmer. <laughs> if you couldn't tell, I'm not experienced at cattle farming, so this is all new for me. Let's build us a water tower. Where would be a good spot for that, do you think? Mm, I think back right there looks good. And let's see what kind of choices we have I, I like the I like this style right here it looks cool let's put it right here and we might we might like put some more decoration around it yeah that's a good idea we'll place this here I might like place some more decoration and stuff around it like maybe put a windmill or something there too so it doesn't look yeah we'll make it we'll seat that in and make it look a little more uh, not like out of place all right let's get this filled up while this is filling up let's check on our progress here and it's really hard to see where we fertilized i can see it though after this there's yeah you can barely see it there's one more row after this and then we'll be able to take this tractor down to field 16 and use him to mow always have a tractor with narrow tires and i'm glad that we have one well we have one for tasks such as this we should have a second it's funny you can have a large output farm with lots of things but there's our water but you still need it seems like you still always need more equipment so let's see how much water they take that'll give us an idea for how many cattle we can handle right there is how much water these guys these gals need are they all, all gals? I'm not sure. I haven't bothered to sex the cattle. Uh, I think so. All right. Should be it. There it is. Whew. Unload trigger. And they're 18 months old, so they're ready to reproduce. That's right. So we actually don't need a lot of cattle starting off because there's room for them to reproduce. Depends how many cattle this pasture holds. Will it tell us? I'm not good at this. Oh, quite a few. That's good. You think that's a hundred per? Or and what other kind of cattle could we? Eh, kinds of cattle could we get? Let's see. So Angus. Then we got. Can we have bulls here or just cows? I guess just cows. Well, I'm pretty new at this. So we'll get some of these kind of cows here for our next pasture and it looks like they ate up all the water no 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 they took the whole tank they took the whole tank we're gonna have to make a few runs back and forth they took that whole tank wow i'm now i'm thinking maybe we should have gotten a bigger water trailer you know i saw like a semi-tanker size one i think maybe we should have gone that direction and let's see, okay, he's doing the last row now, so this should be just about complete. Let's just hang with this guy for a minute here. And then this guy, this tractor is going straight down to the grass field. Actually, let's go back to what we were doing. We need a lot of water for these cows. Let's get the water over there. How is our TMR production going? Let's have a look here at this. Whew, that's gonna take a minute. That's going to take us a minute to get that. And what exactly... I mean, they can eat... Oh, it's even got grain on the list. Interesting. Oh, we have no shortage of grain, that's for sure. I mean, you know. 
We could bring them some grain. TMR is ultimately going to give them 100%. It better with all the work. All the work I'm putting in for you cows. You better be grateful. Let's have a check on this and let's see how's the contract completed all right that's twenty two thousand that'll buy us another trailer load of cattle how about that for yeah that'll buy us another trailer load of cattle and then some oh and look at that we used yeah almost all of our fertilizer well we left the real the refill tank down here Let's get back to our farm. And so I'll take this trailer, oh sorry, I'll take this tractor down to field 16. I'll meet you guys down there. Oh, actually, I told you guys I would show you how we're gonna get that straw out of there. Now this is not something I'd normally do in a series like this, but it's a great tip if this happens to you. I haven't I guess I've tried this. I guess I've done something like this before. It requires just a little bit of out-of-the-box thinking. And so what you want to do is look to see what you can build. I know I have such a structure. I'm just not sure where it's at. So I'm going to have to look here. That is a lot bigger than I thought it would be. But, again, so I guess you see what I'm doing. Out of the box thinking sometimes is required. Now, let's just, uh, let's just pray that our little supercross stunt here allows us to keep the wheel loader upright. That is how you do that, my friends. Um, of course, there is a second part to this, and that is on how do you get it out. Well, that's very easy. So, not immersive, no. But neither is having a huge heap of straw in your cow pasture either, I would argue. So, let's just get all of this out of here. One more little bit. It, it looks so bare in here, I was sure that they would need straw for bedding. But again, you know, always check the map's requirements. I've seen wildly different animal requirements on different maps. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to dump this outside where we can get it. And now, it's very simple. We just do a little bit of this number, which I don't usually like to do. But as I said, you know, it's not immersive, but neither is having straw dumped all over where it doesn't belong. We just reset this back to the shop. Come out here. And voila, like it never happened. Now, let's get this guy down to start on the grass. So, that's how we take care of that. A little out-of-the-box thinking, and things are fixed, and back to immersive on your farm. Okay, now, I will meet you guys down at field 16, now that that's taken care of, and we're going to mow some grass. Actually, that said, we are out of time for today's episode. I just, I've been having, I've been so involved in all of this, I just had the time to... <laughs> look at the recording it is time for today's episode guys thanks so much for watching and uh leave some comments below uh tell me what you think what you want to see or how we're doing here and uh toss me a like if you like the video and if you want to uh, follow along with us be sure to subscribe and keep up to date with the playlist farming here in big flats texas guys it's been a real fun a real fun time here for the first part of september i will catch you guys in part two well not part two but part Ooh, I don't know where we're up to now. I think it'll be episode nine. Uh, catch you in the next episode where we continue on in September towards the October harvest. Thanks a lot, guys. I will see you all next time.